Irish Media Network. We entertain. Good morning, folks, and welcome to the Irish Media Network Sports Update. I'm your host, Joe Caulfield, and welcome to the show. Now, in this week's show, we're going to be talking all about rugby, because after an almost six-month absence, rugby is returning to our screens this weekend with the Interpros. We have Leinster Munster and Ulster Connacht. You couldn't ask for a better reintroduction of sport than that. So we're going to be talking all about this weekend's action, the Interpro competition and the Heineken Champions Cup competition coming out later on. Joining me on this week's show is, and I don't use this word lightly, a true Leinster and Irish legend. This man has 129 Leinster caps, 62 international caps with Ireland and a Lions Tour of New Zealand under his belt. It's the man who did this. Incredible. Michelak, he nearly gave it away. It's on again. Kondipomi says we'll go. Hickey. Hickey is racing away and he's going to get past Palouse. He's got to time his pass. Darcy, back to Hickey. Hickey for the corner! That is awesome! Dennis Hickey is joining me on the show this week. Dennis, thanks a million for joining me. Uh, good, nice to be with you. Bring back some fond memories there. Yeah, some good memories as... as um... Yeah, I think uh, I probably heard more, seen more about that match in the last uh, uh, six months with shutdown and uh, the, the trips down memory lane that I think every network or, or sports provider was was, was doing. So the, the 30 greatest this or the 20 greatest that's and um, that game and uh, try featured in a few. So it was nice to it was nice to see it a bit in, in, in the last six months. Yeah, we really have been living in the world of nostalgia the last couple of months, obviously, because we didn't have any live sports. As a result of that, I think we're all like dying for the reintroduction. And I think it's a great way to kind of burst back into it. Leinster Munster, Ulster Connacht really kind of fuels the fire in you. Yeah, like a bit of nostalgia, I think, from time to time is always is always interesting. But uh, I think people are pretty tired of it at this point. And, and looking ahead now uh, for the first time from an Irish rugby perspective to, to some live games is is is, uh, is exciting and uh, no bigger way to start things off. And I think it's been it's clever, I suppose, the, the, the way the the way they've organized the fixtures to have uh, starting with an Interpro, because I think it focuses the mind particularly of the teams, it's it's back with a bang uh, and both teams, sorry, all four, all four teams will really have to hit the ground running and it will really have focused them, I suppose, if if, um, if it was maybe other fixtures that uh, carried maybe less um, uh, less bite, it might be a li- just a little bit harder. And obviously mm-hmm. you've got the practicalities of, uh, I think obviously would have played a huge part in the fact of no travel. Uh, so it's important that um, uh, that this 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 round of fixtures I think fulfills a couple of things that had to happen, and it's great to see uh, starting off uh, with um, uh, you know as a Leinster guy see, is, is seeing uh, Leinster coming again. Munster is 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 yeah. always going to be a big game. Yeah, and you touched on something there that I want to kick off the show by talking about focusing the mind because I want to talk about Leinster straight off. They had an incredible season. 2019 2020 they were unbeaten in all competitions going into lockdown they were probably the informed team in the northern hemisphere and leo cullen has now had a long period of time to assess what is kind of a blitzkrieg of five or six weeks like they're already in the semi-final of the pro 14 and the quarter final of the champions cup so realistically the next five or six weeks should look like monster ulster pro 14 semi-final pro 14 final quarterfinal against Saracens, hopefully then semi-final and final. Over the next five or six weeks, come like we'll say between now and that quarterfinal against Saracen, Saracens, rather, what are the most important aspects for him to manage over these next six weeks? Um, well, I think I'd be I'd be interested to know, and I haven't I haven't heard them speaking about it. Are they seeing this as a continuation of the season, or do they are they resetting and starting the season again? As I said, they were unbeaten last year, um, so there's a there's a uh, but there's been no momentum. Clearly, six month break, there's no momentum. So certainly, yeah. the players will have have um, treated this this hiatus as a as a fantastic opportunity. I think for all players, particularly maybe some of the older players, to really get get a get an extra uh, uh, long preseason, the likes of which they never really will, they, they, they will ever have got. So mm-hmm. there are, has been advantages to it, particularly, as I say, for maybe some of the older players who just don't get a break, and particularly on the back of last year being a World Cup year, which was 
very, very tough. Um, those players involved in going straight into a really what was a really grueling Six Nations, or we were in the middle of a very grueling Six Nations when the break happened. So, so I, I think I think the the coaches will have used the protracted break as a way to rejuvenate their players and their way to get them refocused on uh, what's still possible. Um, and, you know, they would have had a lot of tired bodies coming back to them after the Six Nations and trying to pick yeah. things up for the remainder of the uh, the Champions League uh, and also then for the remaining of the of the, of the Pro 14. Um, but they would have had to deal with disruptions like, like every other walk of life. Uh, and I know they put a huge amount. They seem to put a huge amount, certainly from from an outside perspective, into the mental side. Stuart Lancaster does a lot on that, I think, with his players. So I think mentally, I think they'll be in a good place. Um, mm-hmm. They'll be excited. Uh, they'll probably have, you know, with the exception of one or two notable uh, absentees, they have a, a, as healthy and as fit as a, a squad as they possibly could have had. So I think preparing themselves mentally for. What is like a mini tournament? I think is 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 yeah. what I have heard it described at. They're looking at a at a block of knockout rugby where they have mm-hmm. to really want to continue to win a little bit of leeway with maybe with the um, some of the Pro Fourteen fixtures, but ultimately they want to keep continue to win, put themselves in that knockout position, then keep going. But that's a big that's a tall ask because mm-hmm. it's it's uh, to can to pick up effectively uh, at the start of a season uh, and have try to have the mindset like it's mid season. Mm-hmm. I think it would be very difficult because, you know, you're, you've got a you've got a, s- a scenario at the weekend where team teams who haven't played in six months, uh, there will be a lot of rustiness. There will be a lot of uh, there has been disruption for both sides in the in, in the yeah, league, probably more so for Munster um, on the back of of a scare that they had with one of their academy testing positive and having to miss some of the preparation for the game that they would have ideally have liked. But I suppose the last six six months for for all teams has been characterized by uncertainty, uh, managing uh, the things they can manage, and not trying to get distracted with the things they can't get uh, they can't manage. And I think that will be uh, that will be in the mantra for the last six months. So I think mentally, I think they'll be they'll be ready to go. But yeah, it, it's it's a unique challenge. It's a unique challenge for for all the teams. But I suppose with so much. Uh, to play for from a Leinster perspective, it would be a unique situation to continue on an unbeaten run into yeah. this run of games and to see how long this, how, how this far this takes them. Yeah, and in terms of that, that is the mental side of things very important. It, it's also quite important to manage the physical aspect of things. In terms of going into this weekend against Munster, do you think he'll come out with, do you think Leo would put out a full strength team? To kind of get them really back into the kind of physical blood them back into it sense of things, or will he kind of manage and rotate his players evenly over the next two weekends because he's already guaranteed home fixture in the semi final? Um, I think there'll be a bit of rotation. Um, I think you'll see a pretty. F- I, I would imagine you'll see a, a pretty f- um, full team f- for the first match out um, mm-hmm. because they'll that team will have a lot of time to prepare. Uh, but I would see it would make sense. It, but I suppose looking at it this way, it's highly unlikely that they would go if they can go on this run, uh, however far this run takes them, um, mm-hmm. that they're going to do it with the same you know fifteen twenty two players. Yeah. So yes. in in that respect, of course, they have to. It would make sense to to rotate players when they can bring people in because they're going to need more than a twenty two man squad to get to to if they to go on that journey successfully. So I would see a bit of rotation. But for the first for the first game I'd be surprised if it wasn't a if it wasn't a um, the strongest team that Leinster and, and Munster for that reason can put out. Mm-hmm. In talking about that, we know that James Ryan is going to miss this these run of matches because he's he's having back surgery. Uh, Ryan Baird had an incredible 2019-2020 season. I'm really particularly looking forward to seeing him coming back. Is there any kind of young players you're really looking forward to seeing getting a run out over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, Ryan Baird is is one of the the players who had a, a very good season. But I suppose there's a, there's a couple of there's a couple of points to that and to any young players coming through is that mm-hmm. Leinster players, particularly younger players who come through and 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 shine in the Pro 14, tend to do it in a scenario where Leinster are dominating teams all the time. So yeah. you know, with the exception of of the of three or four fixtures a year. And the knockout fixtures, Leinster dominate most teams, particularly at home. So, and that's not to that's not to um, that is not to uh, diminish uh, any of the performance of any players. You can only play 
and perform in the team you're playing with and again the team you're playing against but you do have to see maybe some of the performances of a lot of the younger players in that context and this will be a very different run of games for the likes of Ryan Baird you know if he does uh, get to play it it would be exciting to see him play um at this level because it's really knockout tournament rugby really throughout yeah. it'd be it'd be you know it'd be it's quite a different playing the the dragons at home with respect to the dragons that it is to be playing saracens away in a quarter final of a of a of a european champions cup and that's where the difference is and mm. you know james ryan is is a unique talent i would say in the context of leinster rugby and irish rugby uh, and ryan baird is a uh, is a new player who has played really well in his first kind of breakout season mm-hmm. um he doesn't have the same sort of physical attributes maybe as james ryan he's not as big as he, he doesn't have the same sort of height but he's performed very well so i'll be re- i'm i'm always really interested to see any of the younger players who, who play very well for 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 lens from the pro 14 how they handle the step up when they get their chance mm-hmm. and really all younger players can do all any player can do uh, particularly in a squad the size of leinster's is uh, play themselves in contention and then when they get it get a shot because ultimately they do get a shot uh, mm. that they take it uh, and for those some of those players they will get a shot in this in this run of games so it'll be really interesting to see if they can make that step up yeah absolutely that actually leads me on to another point because talking about Munster now obviously the news came out about Joey Carberry during the week that he's, he's his ankle injury persists and he'll be out for an indefinite period of time which is absolutely heartbreaking for him but the significance of that for Munster means that now JJ Hanrahan has to step up to the the senior number ten at Munster, and they have they have really good youth coming through, particularly in Ben Healy, in Jake Flannery, in Jack Crowley. But there seems to be quite a gap between a senior player like JJ Hanrahan and three much more junior players of those three guys. Does Johan Van Gran go out and add another ten to his paddock, or does he just? bring through the youth and blow them in now? Um, it, it's difficult to say because I, I'm not sure exactly where the, where the transfer window and where the the, um, the, the opportunity that Johan van Graan would have to do that. But uh, And this, this injury, as we're talking, is, is only so recent. You know, it's only come to light this week. Certainly not foreseen. But the fact that it's been described as indefinite, uh, I think we can could probably reasonably consider for the purpose of this uh, 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 of this broadcast that it's 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 going to be a long term injury yeah um, or certainly a very long term injury um uh, by by the way as described and very long i mean a season you know in, in a rugby context a full season is a very long is a very long time so if it is going to be a full season i think you know i think for all the recruitment and, and most have recruited very well i'm sure we could talk about that in a minute Mm-hmm. Uh, they probably wouldn't have foreseen 10 as, as a problem position for them. But with Tyler Blandall having to retire last year, uh, they now look very bare in that respect. You know, JJ Henneman is, you know, is a very solid player for Munster and he's played an in, in increasingly important role in the last 12 months because of Joey Carberry's injury and he stepped up and he's performed well in big games. But he's been around a long time um, and I don't think it's, it's, it's unfair to say that that, area now with Joey Carberry, who would have been their preferred, clearly number 10, mm-hmm. uh, out is now a, an area of weakness uh, for, for, for Munster. So mm-hmm. they have to make a decision very quickly. Are they under, uh, are the younger players capable of, of stepping up and, and are they prepared to, to blood them quickly and develop them quickly? And if, that, if, that, if that's not the case or they feel they need uh, more support in that area, they, they're going to have to act quickly. But the problem then becomes, are they going to try and locate someone as a stopgap, so someone who could, let's say, do a job for a year? And then, what yeah. type of player? Do you, what type of player? What type of value does a player like that bring? Um, if you're only bringing someone in for a year, uh, and you're and jumping then, them ahead of the youth in doing so, yeah, well, yeah, and you, you could do that if you say, listen, we, we want someone to bring these players on, but then what kind of a player do you get? Mm-hmm. And the second thing, of course, is. Um, financial you know they've they've emptied the purse strings uh they've, sorry they've opened the purse string they've emptied the the bank account uh they yeah. brought in i understand they brought in from what i've read they brought in private investment uh to help them secure slime and delande and delande so you know how much more resources do they have left to go out and try and um procure uh uh you know a a, a, a significant uh, player at 10. Up number 10 yeah and that's of course the third point is uh, would they be allowed to do so by the IRFU so you know maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves with respect to how, how Joey Carberry's injury is but if you can if we can assume he's out for a season 
and that could be wrong. Um, yeah. Then Munster have find, uh, unfortunately find themselves in a place where they might be a little bit boxed in with the, the size and the scale and the ambition of their other signings and what that leaves, what room that leaves for them uh, at 10. Yeah, their, their hand, as you say, could be forced to, to just blood in the youth uh, that they have. Mm-hmm. Talking about those two signings, I mean, two World Cup winners, uh, the South African Simon and Dale Ande, they add a hugely different dimension, particularly physicality-wise, to Munster. Particularly, I think, like, I think this is like this is the way I'm thinking about it. If I was like facing Dale Ande and Chris Farrell in the midfield, even though the likelihood is it'll be Robbie Henshaw and um, Robbie, geez, sorry, my my head is completely gone. Robbie Henshaw and second centre for Leinster, Gary Ringrose. Gary Ringrose, I went to school with him. Um, so like they're obviously the Irish first choice centre partnership. It's still a daunting prospect taking on the physicality of Chris Farrell and Dialande at the weekend. Do you think that's somewhere that Van Gran will throw Dialande in immediately to target? Well, uh, I think there's a couple of things to, the, to their two signings. I think the reason for getting the, these two world class signings, and they are two world class signings, obviously, uh, two world, world Cup winners with South Africa. Um, so, an incredible pair of signings to get. Uh, the, the 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 I wouldn't say the criticism, but the the um, the analysis that has been levelled at Munster in the knockout stages of the big competitions that they they lack power, they lack the beef to get them uh, mm-hmm. across that semi final hurdle. So getting big powerful world class players was um, clearly a focus for them. So they probably couldn't have got to any more powerful, bigger players in world rugby certainly as a package. So. You know, that's a real statement of intent, and really, what their what their what what their uh, of, of their ambition and and, and mm-hmm. their reaction to that um, to th- that that analysis, which I'm sure internally um, would have reached the same conclusions. I think you know it was specifically with that center uh, uh, center um, pairing. You know, it's it's you know the game has changed a lot, and there's you know there's there's over the summer lots of talk about rule changes and 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 uh, what the game can do to speed up breakdowns and make the ball move faster. But it's still a power game, and it's mm-hmm. going to be more and more of a power game. So having a center a center partnership like that um, certainly gives you a strong idea of the areas where uh, Munster will have a platform to build their game from. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the the the, the challenges. Um, that they would face maybe that ring rose and and um, Henshaw uh, have gone a little bit beyond will be the the combination how the combination works between Farrell and Dale and yeah. they and the fact that they'll um, you know they would have foreseen that as probably Farrell Dale and they, uh Carberry and now they're they um, obviously that that um, that access isn't going to come about certainly in the foreseeable future. But as a unit, I would imagine they've had plenty of training with uh, uh, with JJ uh, Hanran. So yeah, I, I would expect them to play from the start. I think from what I've read, particularly with the international window, is that the two South African players will have to be playing for South Africa. They expect to be playing for South Africa, mm-hmm. so they're not going to have them actually for um, uh, an unbroken period of time. And very often, when and this is a big risk, I suppose, when you when you bring in marquee players that are still playing international rugby, you do lose them for a window. In the past, Irish provinces have tended to try and recruit players who are uh, outside that international um, uh, test uh, demand uh, of their national play. So for one reason or other, they're either in the squad or they've fallen out of the squad or they decided to, 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 to um, not play international rugby by moving abroad. But Munster have done something different. They've they've gone for big marquee names, world class players in the prime mm-hmm. of their career, and as a result, they're going to be without them for, for 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 periods of the season. So they really do have to try and get the money's worth. So I would expect certainly to see them both feature this weekend in what will be a you know a huge a baptism uh, of fire for them in the context of of European rugby in general, but Irish rugby in particular. Yeah, it'll be great to see. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. Um, the effects that that has on this particular match it'll be very interesting to see just like I suppose see the reintroduction uh, of Irish rugby in, in such a kind of baptism of fire in general and to see how they adapt to that as you say if you were to go with your head as opposed to your heart how would you be calling this one? 
I suppose, if I was to go with my head as opposed to my heart, it would probably be the same as my heart at the moment. I would say Leinster probably would be favourites going into this game for a couple of reasons. I think uh, Munster, you know, they've 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 obviously had um, they've made these big signings, but it's going to be very hard for them. They're going to be under a huge amount of pressure, and it's going to be hard for them to hit their ground running, new combination, new team for them. So I would expect their impact to maybe not be as immediate. Uh, notwithstanding, they're going to be under huge pressure from minute one to be, you know, match winners from the start. And that might prove out to be the case. I think Munster have had disruptions in 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 the in the very immediate term. They've had uh, they've had some of the critical last uh, training runs out disruptive because of the COVID um, uh, case that they had within their broader squad. Now, mm-hmm. luckily, none of the uh, uh, you know some uh, I don't think anyone in their senior squad was affected, but. They had to pull some training sessions, and that would have, you know, in what what has already been obviously a very disruptive um, uh, uh, season uh, last year or recent period. That's something they probably could have done without. Uh, and I suppose uh, Leinster as 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 unbeaten last season, and um, you know, having the one, I think, I think eight out of the last ten matches, you would just say on paper uh, an analysis that Leinster would probably have an edge, but. You know, it's a start of it's a start of well, I'm not sure if it's uh, it's not the start of a new season. It's a start of a new period of of um, of rugby. So you know that 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 um, run that Leinster are on, it'll be it's not to, it's it's not certainly not a foregone conclusion that they're going to be able no. to pick up where they left off, left off. But yeah, I think on balance, if you add up all those things, you would say Le- Leinster slightly. But that said, you know, when has there ever been much between the two sides in these uh, in these big games, particularly when both sides have been off and kind of coming at it from exactly the same, relatively the same sort of uh, type of preparation? Fresh back into it. But apart from anything else, it's great to be back talking about it and speculating and giving these Indeed. predictions. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave it at that. Thank you so, so much for joining me. And I know you'll be wearing blue this weekend. And uh, look, at, hopefully we might be able to get you back on later in the season to see uh, to preview the, the Champions Cup as well. No problem. Thanks a million, Dennis. That's it for this week's show, folks. Thanks a million to Dennis Hickey for joining me this week. Really hope you all enjoyed the Interpros, as I will, certainly. And we'll catch you next week. Look after yourself. In the meantime, be good. Irish Media Network.